Welcome to the RevOps Lab, a podcast exploring the art and science of revenue operations. To find more episodes and resources on scaling your revenue engine, visit getweflow.com slash RevOps. Hey, Anis. Hey, Philip. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. So what are we talking about with Uri today? Yeah, um, Uri is the Director of Revenue Operations at Lucia. And Lucia is a product-led company. So that has some serious implications for how Udi and his team are tracking MLQs, PLQs, uh, support different sales methodologies, create reports for leadership, and also how they do forecasting. And we dive into the specifics of all that. So it's a real operator episode, and we hope you enjoy listening to it. Udi, welcome. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, Udi, could you maybe start with quickly introducing yourself, your background, how you ended up at Lucia? That would be great to hear. Cool. So uh, thank you for having me, first of all. Very excited. Uh, so I'm Woody. I'm working at Lucia as the director of urban operations. Uh, I'm actually coming from a very uh, uh, technical background. I worked, Lucia is my fourth company. I worked in Yotpo and other companies here in Israel. Uh, and, I, and, and I worked as a Salesforce uh, project manager, admin, you name it. Um, but a very, very strong uh, background, 10 years of sort of technical flows, Apex, everything I did there. And then in Lucia, I did the shift uh, into uh, revenue operations. I, in my last company, Yotpo, I was more in like uh, trying to ask questions about the business needs and what the business, uh, what, what I'm building for the business. And it's become more interesting. And then... I know that in um, the new company, the new move will, will be uh, a shift towards operations. Uh, and this is me. This is what I'm doing currently. And w- what is Lucia? I, th- I think some people probably have heard about it, but maybe you could summarize it in your own words. Yeah, so Lucia is a sales intelligent platform uh, that can help sales people, uh, recruiters, or whoever is searching for a B2B uh, data. Uh, to be able to prospect, to find the uh, relevant people. Uh, and Lucia is very uh, proud of uh, the unique uh, uh, contacts they have and especially uh, accurate phone numbers. Uh, and it's a PLG company which uh, users can start using for free. Uh, you have a few credits and it's every month it's being uh, uh, renewed. So you can use it free and then decide. She wanted to have a, a bigger plan. Okay, great. Yeah, I think, I think, and also PLG, right? That's sort of like the, the topic that we have uh, for this episode. And um, in our prep call, um, I, I remember distinctly um, you described Lucia as a product led company, not as a company that has a product led go to market motion. I thought that was super interesting. And yeah, maybe you could just elaborate a little bit on that, on that and why you think that differentiation is important. I don't remember when I heard it, but someone said in some uh, platform that uh, it's very hard to be a company and start a product-led uh, growth motion because you already like, it's changing the, the, the roots, changing the, 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 the foundation of the company. So... Uh, if you're starting as a PLG company, it means that it's not a motion. It's what you are. You're, you're giving, you're building your product in a way that can people, uh, that people can use it. People can, uh, uh, uh get to a limit in, in a smart way after they are, uh, understand the value of their product. Uh, if you will look at, uh, Spotify, for example, who is not using Spotify? You're, you you can use it, but then the ads are like nagging you on and, and you just say, okay, I will just buy uh, in Israel is $20. I will just uh, pay that and, and that's it. I, I will uh, listen to music, podcasts, whatever. So so this is the idea. And this is why I say uh, PLG company, because the whole foundation of, of your product is product let go. And you think, um, yeah, they, they, this is very like uh, implemented in me. So, so I mentioned it. Yeah, I can very much relate to that. I think uh, if you look at the great product-led companies, 
it is it is something that is steeped in trench in the product, right? How do you acquire users and then have an activation loop where they get value very quickly? Exactly. Uh, and you know, ideally, you have even vir- virality, right? Calendly is a great example, right? You basically use it, you send it, you have virality. Um, it's a fantastic motion. I think every SaaS entrepreneur always dreams of having that motion. Um, but, uh, but then, um, you know, one reality is also, you know, like what does it do to the ref ops motion, right? Like kind of, um, and maybe before we go into that, like, I'd love to hear a bit, like, what is your go to market approach at Lucia? Cause I think it frames the discussion a bit and then we can go really more into the deep dives of what does it mean for ref ops, right? So the go-to-market as a PLG company is to get as much revenue as possible, self-service, people like will use it, will see the value, will purchase, zero cock, that's it. You no need the sales, no need the revops, no need nothing. But obviously, uh, if he wants to, to grow and if he wants a, a sustainable uh, growth, you need an uh, enterprise and we are working B2B and not B, B2C eventually. Users are people from companies. You can use Lucia with your Gmail or your Hotmail, for example. So, um, um, so our go-to-market is a sales-led growth. Let's say like that is use the PLG, what the uh, product that was produced in terms of traffic, in terms of usage, uh, aggregate it, and eventually as a seller enterprise deals for big companies. We have a huge. Uh, uh, companies like Salesforce and HubSpot and uh, Google uh, that are using and they have a plan and the enterprise plans. And, and this is my go-to market and my mindset in RevOps. And this is what makes, I think, my role very interesting and with a lot of responsibilities because I have the power to do lead generation. It's not a real lead generation from, uh, from the street. It's from the, it's from the store. Like I'm fishing in the store, but but there are a lot of people in the store and you need to detect who is uh, relevant and who is not. Uh, and beside the inbound that we are getting uh, from the pricing page or the marketing forms, we also have the power to just use the users that we have and think about it. Talk to a person that already used your product is much different than, ah, did you heard about Lucia? I know that you heard about Lucia because you used it in the... <laughs> Use it pretty much because you meet our uh, PQL criteria. So let's have a talk. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned PQL there. Uh, I know Lucia has like four plans, right? Like free, pro, premium, and enterprise or something like that. Um, like you mentioned the credits in the beginning that the free plan, you have a specific amount of credits. I think, you know, in our podcast, probably most people are familiar with that kind of model. The audience should be familiar. Uh, but, you know, what does it mean for kind of uh, your PQL and MQL definition, like how do you define it? Do you even have MQLs or you just have PQLs? Do you have something like product qualified opportunities or company accounts, right? Like, and what are the triggers, um, to like you use to, uh, or the criteria you use to, to actually define those? I'm, I'm super curious how that's done. Yeah. yeah so, uh, good question. And the, the, the answer is, is wide, but I will try to, yeah, yeah. to, to give, to, to give the, the mindset. So MQL, yeah, and of course, yeah. MQL, we have, uh, MQL for me, it's everything that we call the inbound is, is a person with intent, raise his hand, come to us. This is MQL marketing brought it. Thank you. Marketing go bring more. Um, uh, and where it comes to the PQL slash outbound, this is where it start to, to get messy because it, it, it's, it's about terminology. Um, so you have the companies, for example, now you have a Nike. Uh, Nike is not part of your database, but we, we all know that it's a good company. Let's say it's a perfect fit for, uh, for Lucia, but they don't have users. Would it be harder to bring them to the table uh, uh, as opposed to an, another company? And let's say it's a 500 uh, employees company from the UK which also have a good fit. So where you will spend your money or where you, your, your, your effort. Or t- so uh, we find, found that it's much, much uh, easier and works much better where it's already a company that you have in your database and that they're using rather than just go and do a cold outbound. We tried 
called outbound. We are always trying, but but eventually we are uh, coming back to the roots of okay. We have people that know the product. Maybe we need to find additional uh, uh, logic, or maybe uh, we should uh, work with product on the plans or with grow, uh, growth uh, team on the on the plans that they are uh, offering and the feature that they are providing. Maybe we can set uh, a, a elegant limits where okay, put this limit, and then I know that this person is is a good fit for the new feature that we are uh, uh, promoting. Or uh, we for sure, if you use SFD, which is part of the products, I know for sure that it's probably one of the operations team, and I know that they want to enrich their CRM. So, so this is a, a different use case. So, to answer a short a question with a, a short answer, then we prefer to to use the PLG and what the PLG produced, and work with the logic on this uh, uh, population. Uh, as well as working with product and, and growth and R&D, which is made even more interesting of how we can together uh, build a product that can support uh, the PQL machine, the product qualified leads. And uh, they had mentioned that what PQL is. So, so the way I would recap that just to, to, to for the audience is, uh, you know, you're trying cold outbound that isn't working as well as essentially phishing in the store of users you already have. Um, I'm curious how you define kind of a free user. Is that an MQL or is that already a PQL? When is an MQL a PQL? And, you know, do you, I mean, yeah, what, what, how, how do you do that? And I, th I think it's hard, right? And I assume it's evolving. It's not a constant, like you're yeah. learning constantly, but like, um, you know, when do you know that, like, and, 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 and I, you know, and I know that there's also users that just basically swipe their credit card, right? But you might know there's like 10 users in a specific account that is really interesting and you want to actually really go out and work with them. So like, how do you, how do you structure that, um, free and then also the kind of self onboarded paid, uh, customers? Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the MQL, I think what you are might referring to is the, the attribution for marketing of uh, what we are produ producing eventually, because they can say, they can claim, hey, we brought these uh, registrations uh, and you use the simple logic, it's, it's, it's MQL. So my terminology, I, I'm not sure it's aligned with the, uh, with the industry terminology, it's Lucia terminology, let's call it that way. MQL is everyone who raised their hand. That's it. It's easier to understand that. Uh, everything else that we're running logic over uh, the database, for me, it's PQL. Uh, and, then, and then we know, I, I don't care about the attribution too much because I care about bringing revenue and secure the revenue, of course. Uh, and, and for example, just to give you like a logic, a very simple one. And in this one, we also uh, use Lucia, like our own product. When we see... Uh, a, a new regi registration uh, is coming into Salesforce. Every, every registered user is uh, getting into uh, Salesforce as a contact under its account. Uh, it's being enriched by Lucia. So we know the company size, we know the country, we know uh, all the company data, and we know about him. We know the telephone number, we know uh, the role. So for example, if we see uh, a manager, a VP of sales, a uh, head of operation, or like a manager title or relevant manager title, this is for me a PQL. Why? Because as I said, it's not something that, it's not someone who raises his hand, but I see that it's a person that, hey, why a VP sales or a, a director of sales will uh, um, register to Lucia? And that they, this is not their use case. It's for BDRs, for salespeople. They probably want to evaluate it. So let's go and, and check them. And by the way, this PQL came after uh, we recruited the first director of sales in, in the U.S. And she said, uh, um, I logged in and I was very disappointed that no one reached reach out to me. So I said, hey, not, maybe we have something here. And, 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 and we have the obvious uh, PQLs of people reaching limits. Uh, you have the free, uh, free account. Uh, you used your uh, X amount of credits. Boom, let's call you. Let's see what, what, what it's all about. Of course, putting uh, some filters, if it's a good company, 
if it's a, if it's a good country because it's, it's different bit between the countries. And, and the good thing about it is if you are talking about emails and deliverability and, and, and calling people, so it's more uh, of a, uh, a white actions. It's called like in deliver, the, the deliver, deliverability world, like you have the gray uh, actions and you have the white actions. It's, it's a user. You accept the, the terms and conditions. Uh, you probably can call him. Uh, and they might expect to, to, to get a call. And if I'm using now, uh, 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 I download the uh, tool and I'm using it, it makes sense for a person to try to sell it to me. I, I will get it. For sure. <clears throat> so, I think so these not... two PQs I gave you, and, and, and now we are working more on the models with a BI team to, to get like more of, uh, take a lot of consideration, use AI to, to teach the system what's working and what's not. But eventually, what is always working, at least in my experience in Lucia, you need a compelling event. You need a reason. You get to the, to, uh, uh, the BDR or the uh, AE needs to understand what is the reason why I'm calling you and why I'm calling you right now. Okay, you just registered and you're a manager. So I can start the conversation. You reach the limit or um, it's a very uh, psychological a uh, psychological approach as I, as I see it. And many times I'm talking to the BDRs, uh, the teams, and I'm asking them, guys, like, what is the reaction of the person that you're talking? Is he surprised or is it the, the conversation is, is in a good environment? Like it's, it's, it's a good conversation. It's not, they are mad, they are not. Um, mm -hmm. And then yes. it give me like the things that you don't see in the numbers. So it's, it's really, yeah. I think yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, I think uh, RevOps talking to talking to also to the internal stakeholders, uh, I think is so important. This is um, the best thing. And this is the best cause I have. Yeah. Um actually and, and on that point, uh, that was one thing I wanted to ask you also is like so you mentioned right like all the users, the new users, the free users to end up in Salesforce. Um I'm assuming do you take Salesforce sort of like as your system of truth? And if so, right, like how do you feed all the product data in? Like, um, do you have like specific events that then in, like, I don't know, push to some field in Salesforce or is this handled in a separate system? Uh, how, how have you solved that at Lucia? Great question, because uh, we are getting technical. And, uh, and by the way, we, in my team, we keep, we, we kept the technical. So we are doing, we are doing like both the operational Stuff, but we are very, very, very strong in technical like integrations and Salesforce. I never use partners. I, I like to know what we are doing and to be able to to, to provide uh, scalable solutions that can support uh, the future. Uh, yeah. So, so this question is, is something that we are really around it. How we get the data? Which data we want to get? We don't want every single data point that we have. So, my my, my answer is. First of all, yes, we are getting all the users. It's being created as a record in Salesforce accounts, uh, contacts, uh, the domains themselves. It's like a mimic of the database of Lucia. Um, and also there's the, the, the important fields, the account status, how many credits they have, what the plans. So this kind of uh, data points we are getting. Uh, till it got too many fields. Like we, we really reached to the 500 uh, uh, field uh, limits in Salesforce, which is very hard, but it's because of that. And then we uh, we thought, what, what should we do? And we understood that we need to work more with a, a B, a BI and not get all the fields, but get uh, signs from BI or insights from BI for uh, interesting logic. So this is the tactic that we are currently uh, starting to do so we have both first of all the important fields because if a csm is now uh working on an account or a bdr work on an account we do want them to be able in one system to see the relevant data um, but once it gets to uh all the features and when they use it less time and what the, the, the exact amount of credits they consume in each product it, it, it's just too much uh, and then this is why uh, we are we we are using both uh, Salesforce with the data that we have there, which is always easier and faster, but also a logic that uh, from the 
uh, BI team. We are using Volcato to do the integrations, which works perfect. And, and so, I mean, I think obviously you want to make sure that the CSMs, SCRs, BDRs, however you, you know, hash the right information, as you mentioned, um, at the point of their workflow when they're actually executing, right? The calls or the emails or whatever the outreach is. Like, which signals have you seen work really well? Like, are there specific examples you could give? Um, so maybe a step before, uh, for me, uh, adoption is the most important part while, while you are implementing the system or a new process. So the mindset that, that we implemented in Lucia, uh, each role should have one, like as, as less as possible object, as less objects as possible. So if you're an AE, you will work with opportunity. That's it. You, you will have reports of accounts, domain, whatever, but you work with opportunity. This is your tool, uh, your main object. Yes, we have additional enablement uh, systems, which, which are using for other stuff, for example, uh, cold recording or uh, forecasting or whatever. But, but if you're in Salesforce, you're now uh, having a, a deal, you work with the opportunity. If you're a BDR, you work with a different object. It's not a, a lead, it's a custom object that, that knows how to work with leads and contacts, but this is what you're working with. Um, so, so once you give them a path and you vacuum it uh, with, uh, with uh, one object or a very uh, button, uh, click of a one button processes, it works good and the adoption is very, very high. And, and then we can also measure, the, and then I can answer your question. Because yeah, I can I mean, measure. I mean, maybe let me jump in there. I, think no, I, I really love this. I mean, the reason we started WeFlow is to simplify essentially workflows for AEs, CSMs, you know, SEs uh, initially, right? Before we went into, you know, full pipeline management and forecasting. And I think, you know, the reality is that most implementations of Salesforce struggle to have strong adoption, right? I think we see this all the time. And it's, it is, it is something that is, I think, also deeply ingrained in the actual experience for the end user, right? Like, how do you create a simplified, focused and efficient experience that really is focused on focusing the, the folks on the right things? Because they have so much stuff to do. There's so much context switches and, uh, the reality is that most people don't really do this. So I just want to, you know, point this out here because I think it's, I love this point so much and thanks for not answering my question and diving into <laughs> this topic because yeah, you might, you might I, start it, it speaks to my heart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I, I really proud on, uh, on how we implement it because of the easy of use. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's, you need to ask the, the BDRs and A's uh, and Lucia, uh, but, but for me, uh, the fact that they have this object, the, the think about the reporting also, the, the, you don't need like, you can bring a, be the dashboard from one object. You can do everything there and put all the filters because you don't need to, to have like multiple objects and then you can't use filters. Never mind. This is too technical, but, <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I yeah. think the audience appreciate it. We yeah. can't go technically enough. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can talk about it for hours, but, um, there yesterday, uh, the CEO, uh, just texted me, Udi, this dashboard is amazing. And, and, and to hear that from the, CS, the CEO for a dashboard in Salesforce, it means that the system works good. Why? Because we build it in a way that we, most of the data are being collected from the, from the processes. It's not like a manual thing for the people to do. It's, it's happening automatically. And we have a great dashboard. I would very, very proud on our dashboards and they are being used by uh, the all C levels. Um, and this is because what we just spoke. Like easy of processes, easy of use, and uh, not not trusting people. Trust the trust the process. Make mandatory trust the process. fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, let me jump on that one because um, that that would have been my next question. Um, because if you have a product led company and and you have this whole motion with the three users and so on, and do you even work with like classical sales methodologies? Like, I don't know, like SDR, BDR working more with band, AEs working more with medic, for example, just to stick with exactly. popular approach. Or are you actually not looking so much at the stages, but really, um, you know, you, you more look at, I don't know, like retention data or like, you know, product led uh, uh, metrics? 
This is a very, very good question. I know that I'm saying it about every question, but uh, you but know, it's, 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 it's the first question to say, you know, yeah, it is. <laughs> so in Russia, we really evolved, like from being PLG when I just started and the, the sales used to sell like a $39 monthly plans uh, as a convert what the PLG couldn't convert. Then we did like a huge change where we start to do like more SLG. Uh, which I, uh, as I expand with the PLG and then turn it into enterprise uh, uh, sales. And then we, we just like wanted to, to go up market to do like more of a structured uh, playbooks and then method sales methodolo methodology. Uh, so right now we are using Mapic uh, for the mid market. And, uh, and then we are trying, we are we really trying that this, the stages will not be like a, things that you must go through because uh, this is how we set it up. It needs to make sense. If you are now doing a business discovery, then what we are expecting you to feel while you are doing the business discovery. We want to make sure that you are uh, do a value setting and you are not just showing features. So this is the metric stuff that we capturing uh, with the persona, what is the, uh, what is the use case and stuff like that. And so, so this is how we're using the, 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 the uh, stages because in each stage, you must enter something that relates to the methodology. And of course, if you are sending the, the uh, uh, contract or if you are, if we, if we can do stuff automatically, we will do it. Um, and the stage will eventually will reflect exactly where the deal is currently uh, at. And we can use it for forecasting and we have a very, very uh, strong focus. Uh, for land, uh, we are like, usually we have like uh, 60 days or the 30 days is very accurate. Uh, 60 days is also pretty good. Yeah, yeah, actually, okay, uh, great. <laughs> You're kind of like answering my questions before. But I but asked for, them, for, for, example, because, <laughs> for example, for example, just to, yeah. to to for the the SMB, it it was too much. So it's more of a straightforward kind of sell, like uh, more like sales cycle is much shorter. So the meta, they just ask to remove the methodology. So it's, it needs to make sense. But once you do like a 60, 70, at least for us, 60, uh, 90 uh, days sales cycle, then you need it more structure. You need like to really sell it properly. Yeah, I mean, that Sorry. makes total sense, right? You have like, like the bigger the deal, like the bigger the company, the more stakeholders the more you need to multi-thread and uh, bring additional and the expectation, people in. The expectation of the customer. If, if you are a big customer, you expect to do a certain uh, process and not like uh, someone uh, selling you credits uh, via the phone. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, 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 of of course. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. yeah, people are used to like a specific process and they, they want to have that process, yeah. Um, but you mentioned forecasting and this is actually something I also thought is, you know, like, I think if you have a very strong product like motion, you can always assume, okay, uh, I can, you kind of like have this huge amount of historic data that you can convert a certain amount of people who come in. And that of course makes your forecast probably a lot more accurate than if you're like a company that is relying on few big enterprise deals, um, each quarter. So yeah, I mean, you kind of like went into that direction already. Um, but yeah, curious how forecasting works. Yeah, uh, at Lucia at the moment, and if you could elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, definitely. So as you said, we have uh, a long tail of uh, data history, uh, which helping us to understand like pacing wise, uh, if we're getting what we need to fit uh, the funnel, uh, it starts from registration, it comes down to the inbounds, the, the MQLs that we're getting, and also the PQLs. So uh, number wise, we, we have the formula and the formula has to work. And usually with big numbers is working. If your conversion rate is 20%, then it might be 19 or 21 or in a big months or good months it will be 25 or I'm just throwing numbers, but something like that, it's very, very predictable. So you rely on the volume or say, okay, if I will get this volume and the mix will stay the same, it usually stays the same in terms of company size and the countries that we are getting it, then you can predict how many, for example, uh, meetings uh, and demos you will have. Uh, so this is the funnel, but when we are talking about revenue, eventually you have opportunities. You have the, the uh, they ease themselves, that they know where it stands and, and what exactly they expect. So of course we can read what they are uh, putting in the opportunity 
Uh, but we also, uh, we, we use Clary for forecasting. They also need once a week to put what they project to finish the month with. Uh, that is not really, it's related, but they're like, it's a free text for them. Okay. I have this pipeline I have the coverage of the pipeline. I have target of 100, for example, and I have a uh, 400, uh, uh, pipeline. I am my, my pipeline coverage is 4X. So they, they can project and put the numbers that they think. And this is where we are becoming really, really accurate where a person um, put his insights, uh, rather than just uh, reading it from, uh, from the data, which a lot of the time is correlated. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love this. I mean, it, you know, I think the first motion you explained is very much a SME motion, right? Like high velocity, high volume, almost like consumer forecasting, which is more focused on conversion rates. And, you know, I think the second motion is the typical bottom up forecasting motion, right? I mean, we are, uh, you know, we are in the same space as Clary and, you know, the other folks. So, you know, that's something which, you know, is obviously also very interesting. I think, you know, bringing that together, uh, is, is, is something that is, that is, that is very interesting, right? Because you want to capture the whole picture, not just, you know, not just the SME. Uh, and it sounds like you have even, you know, over the years structured SME mid market and then enterprise. So obviously all these have different, uh, sales cycle lengths, ASPs and also forecasting motions in that sense. Which is uh, which is really great to hear, uh, and um, I, I mean we're a big big believer that you know like every you know AE should have their own number and have their own accountability and um, you know really drive the forecast submission, and then you have the overrides and the rollups and the adjustments, right? And you know the bigger the deals, the more you do that on a deal by deal basis. But yeah, I think uh, that all you know essentially gives you more data points, right? Uh, to combine your maybe weighted forecast with, you know, the forecast submissions, right? A machine learning algorithm that actually r runs a prediction. And then, you know, it gives you, right? Like, because I think it's like really about combining different aspects to then run like a more accurate, uh, accurate revenue machine. You know? And usually it's, uh, it's aligned and this is where it's like, okay, I can trust the data. And really yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, we are talking here about RevOps and, and, and this is my role, like, uh, all my team work. I don't want to talk about myself as a person, but this is my team work to, to tell the story behind the numbers, numbers, everyone can see. Eventually you need to, we, we do have the ability to create uh, good reports and insightful reports, but the most interesting part is to know the, the story behind the numbers. Why this, uh, conversion rate dropped this month. I know why it's dropped. Uh, I know to tell the story. And, and I think this is the main uh, value uh, beside all the, the building the processes. This is the main value that we have as the people that see uh, everything uh, and, and don't have like, you know, I don't have motivation. I'm not getting more money if the company is successful or not. I'm not commission-based, me specifically. Uh, so, so I always say the truth because I have no other uh, option because it's yeah, not you have no interest, me. right? You, you are yeah, I don't have any in interest. Sense. Yeah, this is the exactly. One. I mean, and I think it's like unbiased. I think uh, you know it's a big theme. Um, but you know what I really love about this, you know, story you just told us the last thirty minutes is you you pretty much describe like making sure that you actually have the data capture capabilities, the data capture capabilities. You know, bring that into the workflows and then actually use that. You know, for both forecasting, but also understanding why things drop off in the revenue funnel, right? Why is stuff leaking? And I think that's exactly, you know, it's like from a very, you know, nitty gritty technical infrastructure layer down to, you know, providing really like deep insights and understanding the business end to end and the go to market motions and where there are opportunities to improve exactly. or where there are risks, right? And I think that's essentially what like great ref ops looks like. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you sharing this. Yeah. It makes you be more proactive than reactive because you understand you two steps ahead. And I think this is also part of the, uh, where you become a more, uh, impactful, where you coming to the business, say, hey, I see this trend. Like this is looks not very promising or this is looks really good. Let's double click. And they are uh, very appreciated. And uh, you become a partner, and and this is eventually how you can really affect uh, revenue. Uh, and 
satisfying. Okay. I really like yeah. it. That's, I think that's great. And that's also a big discussion, right? Um, how, how to make uh, RevOps uh, less reactive, more proactive. And I think exactly. uh, the, the framework that you outlined there, I think, is a, is a great angle and perspective on that. Um, Udi, thanks so much for joining. I think it's been an extremely insightful episode. Uh, we always ask this one closing question, you know, looking back at your career, what advice would you give your younger self or someone who's just starting out in their, their career? Yeah, so uh, another good question. So uh, I, I thought about it a lot and, and, and it's, it's hard to tell it in, uh, in one sentence, but eventually I'm coming from a very, very technical uh, world or background where I used to get the request and just deliver. I would like do the, the best scalable solution, um, but it was, I, I gave technical solution. I didn't understood the business. I didn't ask about, okay, but why are you doing it? Wh what is the impact on the business? And once I started to ask, what is the uh, impact of the business? This is where I started to understand and be interested in the business. And this is where I start to be more proactive and not reactive. And I think it's, it's related to the last part. So my advice is once you get a request, start thinking about the business and the business impact, the business needs and the business impacts and not how I uh, solve it with the systems. And, um, Fantastic. Thank you so much, Uri. Thank you for yeah, having again, me. Great episode. It was a blast. <laughs> yeah, lo loved it. Thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the RevOps Lab podcast. Please consider to like and subscribe our show and give us a five-star rating on wherever you're listening. If you have feedback or suggestions, let us know at podcast at getlethal.com. We read and reply to every email. Thank you.